48 minutes of post time for Kentucky Derby, 149. And uh, this is a very special moment for the connections of these horses. It is the walkover from the barn area. And uh, speaking of barn, there's King's Barns. We'll see if he's the king of Kentucky Derby, 149 for Todd Pletcher. One of two in here for Todd now as he lost Forte to a scratch earlier uh, today. And uh, the anticipated... Uh, anticipation is uh, heightened here Scott as the horses come over they'll eventually get into the paddock there's a long time you know and you can see these horses walking over you know some of them just kind of looking around taking everything in uh, so far from what I've seen everybody's acting professionally once they get into the paddock and they know it's going to be closer to go time then we'll see how everyone else in the field handles the atmosphere no question special moments the horses don't necessarily know what's about to happen, but the uh, the human side of things, trainers, owners, some have experienced this many times and want to continue to experience it every year. Some of them doing it for the first time in their career, and it is a moment they will never forget. Uh, there's Team Brad Cox coming over with Hit Show and verifying, since they're the one in the two horse, I believe, but that's definitely Hit Show in the front there. And it's Jace's Road. Sorry about that. And uh, two horses that uh, are up against it to an extent. Hit show coming off a, a, a tough beat in the Wood Memorial. Withers win before that. Jace's Road, the third place finish in the Louisiana Derby to uh, your pick, Kings Barnes. Angel of Empire right now the four to one favorite. And you made a comment uh, just moments ago that odds on that horse had changed. Uh, it was Tapatrice was a slight favorite, uh, but that has flipped now. It's an Angel of Empire, 4-1, to 9-2. to Yeah, um, I know there was reported on social media a little while ago that it uh, looked like Mattress Mac, who's going to have a significant role in who goes favorite, was leaning towards Tappet Trice, but uh, I know there was a, supposed to be a significant wager coming in towards the top of the hour, and that's when the odds changed, so I'm waiting to get confirmation, but it appears that Angel of Empire uh, has gone to favoritism, and maybe perhaps it's because of the large bet from one match. Yeah, back. we're being told uh, 1.2 million, and, but it's trickling in a little by a little. Right. So you might see, I don't know if it's enough to affect down to seven to two, but it is trickling in little by little over the course of the next you know, 25 minutes, you would guess or so. 45 minutes to post time for the Derby. And Scott, any big surprises to you on the odds board here? Well, verifying being 15-1 to 1 is a very, very big surprise with the scratch of Forte. Uh, that's one that definitely sticks out to me. A uh, little, you know, two fills has been around this price. We were a little surprised, thought maybe more in the 12-1 to 1 range as things... Uh, you know, we're playing out. Derma Sotagake, probably the 8-1 to one price that we thought. How about you? Anybody that's sticking out? Yeah, no no real huge surprises. I mean, two fills maybe taking some, you know, name type action in addition to, you know, people betting them on form. We've seen this happen before with horses like my boy Jack, et cetera. Uh, somebody's got a fill in their family, and there's a $20 win bet. Well, something of note that's... Uh Verifying who is 15 to 1 is one of the closest, lowest payouts in the pick three. So the Kentucky Derby, Joe, an outlier in terms of the wagering in many ways. But normal races, we can use that, the pick threes, the doubles, the, the horizontal payouts as a barometer for where horses may end up when all is said and done. I don't know how much verifying is going to come down, but I would have to assume it's, it's relatively significantly from 15 to 1. This race has changed a lot in the last. 48 hours or so with some defections a uh, couple of horses from california coming up you know sick you know a little bit of a change in the uh environment and the atmosphere and the, the temperature um practical move was the first one to come out then skinner who had drawn into the field uh soon followed a uh, forte you know having a little bit of an issue uh was scratched earlier this morning the kentucky derby favorite it's allowed several other horses uh to join in we also lost the second of the Japanese horses, Continue Our, allowing another Japanese horse, eventually Mandarin Hero, to get in. So we've had some defections. You know, the most notable one was Practical Move, who uh, had won three graded stakes races in a row. But then you do get Mandarin Hero into the field. You get Cyclone Mischief. And Cyclone Mischief is interesting with him drawing in because he would, you would think he would add you know, some, some early pace to this race uh, from that outside post. 
And uh, no question. And then Forte obviously being the biggest defection this morning. Right. Um, but uh, just speaking to the point we were just touching on in terms of the wagering, Angel of Empire with another click down, 272. So Angel of Empire, uh, barring any unforeseen circumstances, is surprisingly <laughs> going to go off as your Kentucky Derby favorite. I think he was probably the, the sixth or seventh choice in many minds. Uh, coming, you know, just a couple of weeks ago. Obviously, the win in the Arkansas Derby turned some heads. But even then, I think there was some questioning. Um, losing Forte, him training extremely well, losing practical move, you know, a number of things happened. But uh, one of the more surprising Kentucky Derby favorites, at least thinking back just a month in some time for me, at least. Yeah, Tapa Trice winner of the bluegrass last time has quite a resume as well he figured once forte scratch it would be one of those two and obviously those wagers coming in are uh, affecting the odds dermasota gake you know people uh, eight to one is pretty much what i thought he would be even with forte in the race and he's holding firm at eight to one right now we've talked about this scott over the course of the last couple of weeks you're either on one side of that fence or another people that like this horse are like man i'm getting eight to one on dermasadagake and then there's other people that are fading uh, the horse completely you, you just never know how these derbies are going to play out uh, particularly with maybe a handful of them that you feel could go either way may just kind of like that confidence game is kind of like that and uh, a lot of the others have more reliable form i would say to go on two fills off the big win on the synthetic racetrack last out good races at fairgrounds prior to that uh, that's another one where you could say man i really am a believer in the turfway race or i think that the turf ra race was more of an outlier right dermasodagake to your point you know i think about uh a month ago maybe three weeks ago we're going to be right back in just a moment. We'll continue on with the coverage. A lot's going on here in the next 40, 40 minutes before post time. Racing fans, please turn your attention to the track around the first turn as the horsemen and horses of the 149th Kentucky Derby are on their way to the paddock. The walkover has begun. There's Disarm Joe coming over, horse that uh, you've been high on for quite some time, and uh, took a little while to, to get things going. Just one win, but a good second in Louisiana Derby. Hard to make uh, what, know what to make of the Lexington because in many ways, you would think if they, the goal was the Kentucky Derby, wasn't gonna be fully cranked, they know the points they needed. The other way to look at it is, it was kind of an underwhelming effort if, you know, if he's a D Kentucky Derby type winner. Yeah, no, for sure, there's different roads to the Kentucky Derby and uh, Disarm road started a little bit later than a lot of these horses and uh, not by design uh, Steve Asmussen running in, in an allowance race at Oaklawn ran second you don't get points for that ran in the Louisiana Derby got 40 points and uh, 
Thought that that might be enough to get him in the Kentucky Derby, but with the revisions in the point system, giving points to the top five horses, Forty wasn't getting in at that point. As it turned out, he would have gotten in quite easily. <laughs> yeah, it's right? funny. Up, right. But he went in the Lexington Stakes uh, three weeks from the Kentucky Derby, ran third. You know, winning that race would have been great, but it wasn't necessarily the goal. Got the necessary points. And uh, Caitlin Free standing by in the paddock, Disarm is my third choice in the race, but uh, certainly if he won, I would be thrilled for Steve Asmussen winning his first derby and for my bankroll. Uh, but you've got some information on somebody else who likes Disarm. Yes, I do have some information on somebody else that likes Disarm. I like Disarm as well, but I was able to talk to Super Bowl champion Patrick Mahomes. I asked him who his top selection was. He gave me Disarm. He gave me a couple other horses that he liked as well. He saw my Derma Soda Gake button, and he said he liked Derma too. So if he likes Derma, he likes Disarm, then I'd say we're all going to have a pretty good day. But Patrick Mahomes, who is going to be calling riders up, giving out Disarm, is his top selection here in the Kentucky Derby. All right. Thanks, Caitlin. And uh, Steve Asmussen, the trainer of Disarm, has compared him to his sire, Gunrunner. Scott Gunrunner ran third in this race uh, when he ran in the Kentucky Derby. It was a good third, but he wound up being an even better horse down the road as an older horse, one of the richest thoroughbreds of all time. And, you know, horses can only run in the Kentucky Derby once as a three-year-old. The timing of it is the first Saturday in May. Some horses are more mature at that stage of their careers, and some horses aren't, will be better further down the road. And obviously, Steve is the winningest trainer of all time here in the United States, North America, over 10,000 victories. Nobody's had more wins than him. An elusive Kentucky Derby win, obviously, but to him, it's about the big picture. But you know, especially after last year and the heartbreak with Epicenter running second to Rich Strike, he would like nothing better. And you would think, you know, eventually it's going to come flying under the radar a lot more this year with Disarm. Well, I mean, Todd Pletcher took a little while to win his Kentucky Derby. Super Saver ended up getting bet, but he wasn't a horse that had a lot of fanfare throughout the prep season, Good and point. it got Todd's first. So not the price that Disarm was, is, is going to be in this race, but still kind of an under-the-radar. You know, Todd sent out some, some Derby horses that were favored, second choices that were legitimate horses from the start of the prep season, like a Forte, maybe not the same resume, but just someone, horses that were good right away kind of thing. But uh, there you saw Dermis Sodegake a little before. Now we're taking a look at Hit Show. One of uh, four in here for Brad Cox. 24 to one. The resume's probably, if, if you have any sort of belief, Joe, in the New York prep races more than the common thought, he's an, under, an overlay at 24 to one. That being said, that's going to be a tough trip for uh, Manny Franco to work out from the rail. I'm, I'm trying to envision what the trip would be, and I think it, the best one would be shortest drop one it, around the track. Dropping back though, probably because yeah. I don't—he's not fast enough to make the lead, and I just didn't see, haven't seen anything to make me believe he can sit kind of mid-pack in that big tight spot, relax fully, and then wait for a seam to open. That doesn't seem like that's. Uh, that's well, what, let's, that. let's talk about the pace. None of these horses have been a mile and a quarter. That's one of the unique things about the Kentucky Derby. Mile and three sixteenths for the UAE Derby. Mile and three sixteenths for the Louisiana Derby. Won by Kings Barnes. UAE Derby won by Dermasodagake. And you've got some horses that like to be forward in here. You've got obviously post position potentially coming into play. But once that gate springs open, you know, it's mayhem. Anything can happen. That first turn is so critical, so important for positioning. And there's a lot of racing luck involved, so to speak. But on the backstretch, when they're sorting themselves out eventually, Scott, who do you foresee being, you know, the top three or four horses that are going to be showing the way? Well, I didn't necessarily think it was had to be the case before the draw, but I'd be very surprised if verifying isn't one of those horses. He's a horse with enough speed to be involved early, and when you're drawn down in the two-hole in an 18-horse field, it's go time. Tyler said to Caitlin Free earlier in the interview today that, you know, he knows he's He's got really no choice but right. to try to go forward. He's got a horse that's got speed anyway. Exactly. Yeah. So they, they may very well set the pace in here. Confidence game drawn a little bit to the outside of him. Actually just one, two posts down. I think his best chance is to be up and close to the pace. Kings Barnes, a pit horse you like, I think might be just off the pace. I don't think Jose Ortiz is going to be all out. I think from the six hole, he's got some options. But he's going to run, a, run a, come out of the gate running. I mean, if he's sitting 12th, he's not going to win this race. Reincarnate, for sure, is a horse. And then the horses to the outside. Jace's Road, if he's fast enough. And then Cyclone Mischief, who drew in off the, off the also eligible list, now gets I-Ride Ortiz Jr. 
Um, and he will have to be aggressive from that outside, even though it's not really in IRAD's DNA to be a very aggressive gate jockey. Derma Sotogake went gate to wire in the UAE Derby, but his previous races he stalked from off the pace. That was a little bit circumstantial because he drew inside. There wasn't any speed in there. He was fast enough to take the lead. And when you've got a horse like that who's got positional speed or as a stalker that makes the lead, you know, they become triply dangerous. He'll be somewhat forward, probably one of those horses leading the second flight. Yeah, Dermot Sotogake probably going to end up sitting a little bit close to the pace, but not on the lead. There you see Jace's Road, one of the horses that Scott mentioned, is likely to be part of the early proceedings here. Brad Cox with uh, a full hand of uh, horses uh, to run in the Kentucky Derby this year. Won the Kentucky Derby via disqualification with Mandaloon couple of years ago and you see this headgear maybe if we can get Caitlin back on too she can explain this headgear it's on both of the Japanese horses Derma Sotogake and Mandarin Hero just maybe you know putting the horse in a position so they don't have to necessarily hear lots of noise in their surroundings that they might not be used to yeah, we don't see that much of that type of headgear, at least I don't here in the States, but you do see it from time to time, and uh, it would be interesting to know exactly what the thought process is there, but clearly some of the idea is to keep the focus of the horse as just traditional blinkers that we're used to think of. Uh, but uh, there's Mandarin Hero, Joe, who getting a, getting a little bit of buzz here, drawing it off the also-eligible list, people giving this horse a chance, and San Anita Derby runner-ups have been legitimate over the years. There's been a number of good ones. Last year it was Messier. Uh, Authentic was, was the runner-up in the Santa Anita Derby. This is a horse that deserves to be in this race, didn't earn enough points, but, you know, that effort, I thought, made him amongst the top 18 to 23-year-olds in the country. The turf racing is so much more prevalent in Japan, and just recently, you know, they've upped their game on the dirt side of things, and Mandarin Hero competing on the lesser so uh, circuit, so to speak, and he really proved himself in the San Anita Derby. I mean, he was potentially best. Practical move, got his nose down that day, but Mandarin Hero didn't have the cleanest of trips. Was on the grounds here, you know, for the last week, 10 days, and was able to draw into the field. And if you like the San Anita Derby as a prep overall, then you like Mandarin Hero, who's a higher than 20 to 1 right now. And the way it worked out, practical move, we thought was going to be the only one for a little while. Then Skinner drew in. Mandarin Hero was on the outside looking in. Skinner drops out of the race. Both practical moving him around, and it's Mandarin Hero who gets in. Blanket finish. I'm glad this horse is in the race. You know, don't like to see defections, but he ran well enough in his lone start in the States to believe that, you know, this is a horse that may, we don't know, we'll find out a lot today, but he may be one of the, you know, better horses in this crop coming and give Japan a, a significant chance. I mean, he started out, Joe, in what is known as the uh, NRA, which is the second tier of, of racing in Japan. It, dirt racing is the priority there for the most part. Turf racing in their highest circuit is where most horses start, Derma Sotogake being one of them, ended up moving him over to the dirt. But this is kind of a, a, a underdog type story that uh, Japan is obviously going to be fully behind moving a horse like this coming in from the Tokyo City racetrack. Um, you know, to get to a point like this, nose defeat in the Santa Anita Derby, and now uh, what, 20, 20 to 1 to win the uh, 149th run in the Kentucky Derby. Right. And, you know, it's been well documented about Japan's success overall. It was Breeders' Cup races here recently, success in places like Dubai and uh, Saudi Arabia, too. You continue to see the horses uh, in the saddling enclosure, the temp temporary saddling enclosure. Scott, we should mention Kentucky Derby 150 next year. Uh, we're going to move the temporary saddling enclosure for the rest of the season, rest of the year here at Churchill Downs um, to a, like I said, temporary home, and they're going to get to really building this paddock out for Derby 150, which is uh, going to be something to behold. Yeah, I mean, tremendous job by uh, the whole team here at Churchill to have this one looking the way it does. A lot of open space. See, people seem to be enjoying themselves. It was cramped before, but man, is that something that's going to be a sight for sore eyes. That, that new paddock is going to be something. Really looking forward to next year this time when we uh, get to see it unveiled. James Scully and Caitlin Free in the paddock as well, and the uh, riders up call is just moments away not riders up the the, the the jockey walk is just moments away 
So we'll eventually get a report from Caitlin as to how the horses are looking down there, how everybody's acting down there. This is an environment that none of these horses has ever experienced. <coughs> and we'll see how they handle it. I mean, so far it seems like, I mean, from our vantage point, we're not down there, but everybody seems to be handling the environment uh, just fine. And uh, the trainer's job is to try to keep their horses calm, get the saddles on, uh, get them onto the racetrack in uh, race-ready mindset. And Caitlin's down there, and uh, I think we've got a report from her. Uh, Caitlin, what are you seeing uh, down in the paddock? I'm not really seeing anybody acting up too much at all. Everybody's pretty calm. I'm getting a look here at Derma Sotogake. He, they've got the pony in front of him. He's just a little bit keyed up. The trainer's trying to saddle him. Uh, the assistant trainer, or rather the trainer is a little bit shorter. Shorter, He wouldn't be able to saddle him with the way we have this set up. So he is getting saddled at the moment. Uh, pony in front of him, helping him get saddled. He's not being bad by any means. I think he's just a little bit keyed up. The atmosphere is a lot for him right now, but he have the pony helping him get saddled. He's settled down quite a bit now. All right. Thanks, Caitlin. Uh, maybe having a little bit of an issue with the... Uh... There's a lot of people down there. We'll try to get another report from Caitlin uh, before the horses go out. And there you see uh, Greg Blasi in front of Dermasota Gake. So I mean, this is this is worth uh, worth taking note of. It's not completely out of the ordinary, but you just want to keep the you know the pony horses, Scott. They help relax the other horses. They like their buddy. You know? Like you to me when I'm getting yeah, right. a little bit amped up. You uh, calm me down, Scott. It's not the end of the world. It's going to be okay. And it, and it's interesting because some of the horses will be kept in the stall as long as possible. Some of them, you know, like to to walk the saddling enclosure. There you see verifying right there. Nice, calm, cool, and collected. And uh, that's what you want to see from your Kentucky Derby horse, you know, leading up to post time. This is a horse that has a ton of class, pedigree, the son of Justify, a half to Midnight Bizu, who ran third in the Kentucky Oaks to Matt Monomoy Girl in uh, 2018, bred to be a star, working his way to being one, but just two wins, obviously, this would go a long way in uh, leading him to stardom, a big effort here. We talked about him being on the inside. If you're, if you're wagering on verifying, expect him to, to give you a, at least a, a route early on in this race. Tyler right. Gaffleon going to be aggressive out of that gate. Going to be forward. We got another report from Caitlin about uh, Mandarin Hero. Caitlin? Yeah, I'm down here in front of Mandarin Hero. Very similar thing to what I saw with Derma Sotogake. They have the pony over here with him, helping him get saddled just in case. The Japanese horses have been saddled before the American horses, so Mandarin Hero facing the back of his stall. He's much calmer than what Derma Sotogake was, so they just kind of have him facing away from all the action. The pony is there to keep him company just in case should something go wrong. He's backing up a little bit um, now that they have the saddle tightened on him. They just tightened the girth, and he backed up just slightly, but the saddle is on now for Mandarin Mandarin Hero, and they're going to take him out and walk him now that the saddle is on. Uh, so he is saddled and ready to go, coming out of his stall right now. And uh, Caitlin, uh, the headgear on both of these horses. Mm -hmm. So the headgear that they're wearing, they're wearing, um, they're wearing not necessarily blinkers. It's more of what you call a hood. They have the earmuffs on. Uh, the earmuffs kind of muffle the sounds and everything that is going on. It's definitely more sensory friendly for the horse. Keeps them a lot more calm. Uh, it's something that is very customary to wear, especially in Japan, Hong Kong, places like that. Most of the horses do wear hoods. Sometimes they take them off uh, before they enter the starting gate before the races. But I believe these horses will both wear hoods during the entire year the race all right just moments away from the jockey walk and um, probably about 10 minutes away or so from the uh, call to post as uh, we inch closer and closer to Kentucky Derby 149 and you know there's so much money in the pool Scott you're not going to see some of these odd drops that we see in some of the other races there's millions right. and millions of dollars bet yeah you're we're accustomed sometimes to seeing some startling drops as we get closer to post these days uh, but that's not unlikely to be the case I mean we saw 1.2 million dollars over the course of a few hours go up on 14 the current favorite angel of empire and that only dropped the horse from 9 to 2 to 4 to 1 to 7 to 2 so really exciting times here Joe uh, the jocks will be coming out any second Yes, they will. Uh, the jockey walk 
will occur momentarily. We'll uh, let you enjoy that. And uh, we'll be back to give you some final analysis, uh, tell you about some of the horses we like in just a couple of moments. The Jock Walk coming up next. Bueno amigos, bienvenidos, disculpen por la intromisión, bienvenidos a la nueva transmisión de TV Burrera. Estamos a 20 minutos, yo creo que se va a demorar un poquito más lo que va a ser la... Voy a bajar un poquito el volumen de, de la fuente. La largada de... del Kentucky Derby 2023, este Kentucky Derby número 149, bueno, edición 149. Estamos transmitiendo en Facebook y en Twitch. Lamentablemente YouTube eh, está bastante estricto. Hay que ser muy claro. Esto tiene derechos de autor, obviamente. Y transmitirlo no es, no es correcto. Ayer transmitimos el Kentucky Oaks. Y recibimos una infracción. Y bueno, hoy quisimos transmitir Kentucky Derby. No nos dejaron ya. Así que, bueno, por lo menos lo estamos trayendo a ustedes. Por aquí por Facebook, que hay muchísima gente. Y bueno, por Twitch también, que es una plataforma muy nueva. Y no es tan fácil de entender. Eh... También lo estamos transmitiendo en Twitch. Así que un saludo grande para toda la gente de Twitch. La gente que está mirando desde Twitch, si puede eh, seguirnos en el canal. Follow this channel. Eh, le agradecemos un montón porque tenemos pensado empezar a subir contenido aquí en Twitch también. Y bueno, la gente de Facebook ya conocen más o menos. Dejar un me gusta nos ayuda muchísimo. Y si pueden, todos los que están en Facebook ahora mirando este Kentucky Derby 2023, compartir la transmisión nos va a ayudar realmente muchísimo. ¿Sí? Ya en unos minutos voy a comenzar a, a leer mensajes. Eh, por ahí dice Milagros Vidal, dice, también fue retirado continuar otro caballo japonés invitado. Sí, hubieron tres o cuatro retiros, se retiró Forte hoy, que fue, bueno, había muchísimos rumores de Forte que se iba a retirar realmente. Hace dos o tres días que venía, yo lo venía diciendo en TikTok y bueno, hoy lo tuvimos que confirmar. Parece que tuvo una pequeña lesión en el vaso y eso lo dejó fuera de la carrera. Pero imagino que podría estar para, para, para Prickness y para Belmont sin ningún tipo de problema. Veremos, veremos quién gana hoy. La ilusión se renueva cada año con un nuevo triple coronado americano. Aunque es cada vez más difícil realmente conseguir un potrillo que sea tan... Eh, ...cualivalente, eh, que, que, que tenga esa constancia de correr en distintos hipódromos... ...aumentando la distancia encima eh, y bueno... Teniendo siempre... Bueno, a ver, se presentan caballos que generalmente siempre están 10 puntos. Entonces, si el que ganó el Kentucky para la siguiente está 9 puntos, es muy probable que pierda. Entonces, es cada vez más difícil sacar un triple coronado. Yo creo que se van a ir distanciando más en el tiempo. Obviamente, cada tantos años va a haber uno, sin duda, porque van a ser un, un caballo de otro planeta, como suele suceder eh, muy a menudo. Por ahí Alberto dice, tremenda transmisión, te felicito desde Venezuela. Bueno, muchas gracias. Eh, Chapi Pérez desde Orlando, Florida eh, 21 voy a ir a Ortiz eh, Puerto Rico, los Ortiz dice Carlos por ahí, bueno, nos pueden dejar de donde nos están mirando, pueden dejar en los comentarios que los vamos a tratar de leer a todos como tratamos de hacer generalmente siempre, hay muchísima gente de Venezuela y de Puerto Rico que 
Para los que no saben, nosotros somos un medio de prensa uruguayo que cubre carreras internacionales. Así que si pueden dejar un me gusta en la página, compartir eh, la transmisión, siempre todas esas cosas se agradecen mucho porque nos ayuda a difundir esto. Que reitero, son transmisiones muy difíciles de conseguir porque los derechos lo tiene NBC eh, Sports. Se ponen muy muy estrictos, te bajan las transmisiones. En Facebook por ahora no hay ningún problema. Si se llega a cortar voy a tratar de retransmitirlo, o sea, volver a transmitir enseguida. Pero creo que lo más seguro es Twitch, así que los que tengan la oportunidad de ir a Twitch, el, el... es muy difícil usar Twitch para la gente que recién está empezando con esto de la tecnología, ¿no? Pero bueno, en Twitch pueden ir y Kentucky Derby 149 es el usuario, ahí lo van a tener. Y saludo también a toda la gente de Twitch que también nos puede ir diciendo de dónde está. Por ahí dice saludos de Ecuador, eh, saludos Tostado de Santa Fe, Puerto Rico, suerte los boricuas, dice por ahí Berto, excelente programa. José M. de Jesús de Canovanas, Puerto Rico. Eh, Chucho Castellano para encima. Castellano que va a correr, creo, al número 8, ¿no? Mage, que es uno de... Bueno, yo tengo dos preferidos, o dos caballos que me gustan mucho para esta carrera. Eh, uno es Tapit Trice y el otro es Mage. Han hablado muy bien de muchísimos caballos, pero, pero hay muchas opciones. Tapit Trice winner número 5, dice Lu. Gerardo Adrián dice, saludo a Argentina, te saludamos en la gran transmisión. Desde Merlo, Buenos Aires. Bueno, un abrazo grande para todos los argentinos. Desde Venezuela, dice Leandro. Eh, Star más también lo transmite y ni siquiera pone subtítulos. Bueno, anda mirando a Star más, qué sé yo. Eh, falta la leyenda Frankie, que hoy estuvo corriendo en Gran Bretaña. Gracias por la transmisión, amigo. Lo vemos desde Chicago, Illinois, ligando al 8 Mage. Con la Junta Venezolana. Bueno, bueno, ahí les decía, viste, que me gustaba Mage y me gusta Tapit Trice. Me gusta un poquito más Tapit Trice, el tordillo. Pero Mage... A ver, son todos de cuidado en esta carrera, pero creo que son dos que me gustan mucho. Saludos desde Maracaibo, Venezuela, la ciudad natal, eh, no llega a leer. De la Junta, del 8 Castellano y Delgado. Saludos de Ecuador, del Hipódromo Miguel Salendivo. ¿A qué hora es la carrera principal? Bueno, se corre en 15 minutos. Creo que van a ser más de 15 minutos porque siempre suele atrasarse esta contienda, pero bueno, veremos si realmente son, son 15 minutos. La sorpresa la del 5, dice Sergio. ¿Dónde se corre esta? Esta se corre en Churchill Downs, como se corrió toda la vida, creo. Desde Madrid, dice Alejandro. Saludos desde Chile, un venezolano fanático de su programa. Dios los bendiga. Bueno, un abrazo grande para Miguel López. El 5 no pierde. Desde Uruguay, dice eh, Javi. Muchas gracias desde Libertad San José. Dominicana, dice José. Eh, voy a lo mío de Puerto Rico. Saludos. Bueno, creo que se van a venir para la pista ya. Este muchacho está haciendo la presentación. Realmente no, no tengo conocimiento de quién es. Le voy a subir un poquitito el volumen para que por lo menos haya un sonido de fondo. Y ahí se vienen para la pista, si no me equivoco, señoras y señores. Vamos a hacer el repaso de, de la nómina de competidores. Y quiero ver si puedo llegar a leer algún comentario eh, de Twitch. Que en Twitch ya somos 200 personas. Muchísimas gracias a toda la gente de Twitch. Y desde Twitch, como decía, si se pueden llegar a, a dar seguir ahí donde abajo dice seguir... Se lo agradecemos muchísimo a toda la gente de Twitch, que es un canal nuevo. Así que nada, también en Twitch nos pueden dejar en los comentarios. Eh, desde donde están mirando, saludos de Paisantú, dice Gidio. Se vienen para la pista nomás, señores. Vamos, Tapi Trice. Este es el duro hoy, dice Francisco. Eh, ¿Qué caballo argentino hay? No, no hay ningún argentino. Ayer ganó la, la yegua argentina Didia, aquí mismo en Churchill Downs, en el día del Kentucky Oaks. Un clásico de Grupo 3, una carrera muy importante. Se mantiene invicta Didia en Estados Unidos. Una llegó que corrió la serie de, de Palermo de Plata o Palermo de Oro. No sé, algo así corrió en Argentina, no me acuerdo bien. Pero una llegó que está demostrando que tiene un nivel extraordinario. La nacida en Argentina. Javier Castellanos gana y segundo llegará Junior Alvarado. Saludo de San José 5 y 7, dice Luis. ¿En qué canal pasa? En este, de Urrera. <ríe> Saludos de Sauce Corrientes, estudio de Portugués, familia Correa. ¿Cuál es Practical Move? Eh, no sé, me fijo ahora, voy a mirar bien la, la nómina de competidores, que no la puedo tener porque estoy mirando los, los, ¿cómo es? los mensajes. Pero vamos a mirar bien la, la nómina de competidores. Yo realmente, siendo totalmente sincero, la carrera no la estudié del todo. No he tenido tiempo estos últimos días, lamentablemente. Pero de lo poco que pude ver, eh, Forte sé que era lo más fuerte de la carrera, vale la redundancia ahí, juego de palabras. Se retiró por, eso, por ese problemita en el vaso. 
Ahora, me terminó gustando bastante Tappy Trice y Mage, que son los dos caballos, me parece, uno de los más fuertes de la carrera. Aunque el favoritismo de las apuestas ahora es para el 14, Angel of Empire. Justamente en imagen, me parece que el director de Churchill me está escuchando. Ahí lo tenemos. Siguen en el huevo. Bueno, ahí está la trompeta clásica que anuncia la salida de la pista para el paseo preliminar de la carrera más importante del mundo, sin lugar a dudas. Por ahí me preguntaban eh, cuál era... Bueno, no me acuerdo. Bueno, pero se, se borró fuerte, se borró Lord Miles, se borró Continuar, se borró eh, Skinner y se borró Practical Move. Bueno, Practical Move justamente es el que me preguntaban, ese número, era el número 10 y se terminó borrando. Ahí se viene para la pista. Vamos a hacer rápidamente el paseo preliminar. Estamos a 12 minutos de la largada del Kentucky Derby. Eh, la Copa de Plata me corrige ahí, Edgar. Bueno, estuvo corriendo la, la Copa de Plata en San Isidro o en Palermo. Gana el número eh, 13 5 11. Bueno, me gustó la, la temática de Diego de poner trifectas. Me gustaría que pongan alguna trifecta. No solo el que les gusta, pero sí que, que pongan los tres que creen que pueden llegar a, adelante. Y estaría bueno para ir leyendo en el chat a ver cuáles son sus fórmulas. Cuál es la trifecta. Mi triple fórmula va a ser con el 5 Tapit Trice. El enemigo va a ser Mage. Bueno, a ver, de los caballos que ingresaron de suplentes, eh, realmente me parece que no, no son para descartar para nada. ¿sí? Ayer ganó un Mischief, el Kentucky Oaks, y de sorpresa voy a poner a Cyclone Mischief, que por ahí estaban poniendo que lo va a correr Irado Ortiz. Irado Ortiz que ayer estuvo muy cerca de ganar el Kentucky Oaks, y quizás tome revancha en esta competencia. 8, 5, 14, trifecta, dice Alberto. 14, 5, 8, eh, la trifecta, dice Christopher. En San Isidro decían la Copa de Plata, muy bien. 5, 15, 1, dice Francisco. 14, 5, 8. 13, 6, eh, 17, por ahí. Bueno, hay un montón que están matando triple fórmulas. Mira este, Edward Mejías. 8, 22, 5. Ahí está poniendo a uno de los suplentes que ingresaron entre ayer y hoy. Bueno, el 23 ingresó hoy, justamente. ¿Cuál lleva Ortiz? Si no me equivoco, lleva el 21. Pero ya van a llevar, eh, ya se va a venir la, el paseo preliminar. Ya lo estamos viendo en imágenes. Aún no con la presentación de cada uno de los jinetes, caballos, que creo que ahora comienzan a dar la vuelta. Es muy rápido, así que voy a tratar de leer lo más rápido posible. Saludos y suerte a los que van jugando venezolanos desde Barraca. Bueno, ahí tenemos al eh, número... Uno, Hit Show, con Manuel Franco, entrenado por Brad Cox. Número 2, Verifin, con Tyler Gafalione. 3, Tufil, con Jared Lowberry. A este, la verdad que no lo conozco. 4, Confidence Game, con Jay Graham, entrenado por Kate. No vi quién. Número 5, acá está mi favorito, Tappy Trice, con el excelente Luis Sáenz y entrenado por el excelentísimo. La celebridad Top Fletcher, número 6. Kim Barnes con José Ortiz, también un pupilo de Top Fletcher. Ahora en imágenes el número 7, Rain Carnet con John Velázquez. Han hablado muy bien desde el número 7, también está pasando 14 por 1, 8. Para mi otro candidato, Mage, con el otro excelentísimo Javier Castellanos. Gustavo Delgado, su entrenador. Obviamente 9 y 10 no corren. Pasamos con el 11. Dizan con Joel Rosario. Otro excelentísimo jockey latinoamericano. 12, uno de los que más paga es Jace Road con Florent Jerux. Un caballo de Black Cox. Otra celebridad de entrenador americano Sun Thunder el número 13 con Brian Hernández creo que leí bien 14 el favorito de las apuestas Angel of Empire con Flavian Pratt otro de Brad Cox favorito y dicen que uno de los más bravos de la carrera el 15 no corre 16 Race King con Gerardo Corrales el número 16 está pagando 32 creo que es el que más paga junto al 12, aquí tenemos al 17, 
japonés Terma Soto Gay con Christoph Lemar, un caballo que ganó la UE Derby, no sé si recuerdan, lo transmitimos en vivo. 18 Rocket Can con Junior Alvarado, entrenado por William Mott, está abonando 28. Y empieza el show de los suplentes con el 21. Ahí viene Irado Ortiz con Cyclone Mischief. Entrando por Ted Romans. Está abonando 28 por 1. El 22 es para Mandarin Hero, otro japonés, con Kazushi Kimura. Otro que creo que corrió en Dubai. Y el 23, King Russell con Rafael Bejarano, entrenado por Ron Mocket. Está abonando 31 por 1 por dólar apostado. Esos fueron los participantes que van a animar el Kentucky Derby número 149. El año que viene tendremos la edición 150 y seguramente sea algo muy especial. Ahí tienen un plano bastante amplio de Churchill. Repleto de gente como es común. Estamos a falta de 7 minutos para la largada. Le reitero lo que es para mí la carrera más importante del mundo, por encima de Breeders' Cup, por encima de Saudi Cup, Dubai World Cup, eh, Arco del Triunfo, lo que sea. Para mí esta es la carrera más importante, no por el, el nivel de los caballos, porque obviamente hay potrillos muy buenos, que tienen muchísimo futuro, y hay potrillos que van a quedar acá y, y va a ir a menos su, su campaña, como pasa siempre, pero por historia, por expectativa, siempre esta para mí va a ser la carrera más importante del mundo. No sé qué opinan ustedes. Vamos a pasar de nuevo con el chat. Me mandas un saludo, dice Gidio. Bueno, un saludo grande para Gidio. David dice, Forte tuvo problemas médicos. Es verdad. Panamá siempre presente con Luis Sáenz y Gerardo Corrales, dice David. Mi dinero en Seattle Suite, dice... No, no sé el nombre de usuario ese. Eh, vamos a pasar a los comentarios de Facebook. Ese era por Twitch. Por ahora la transmisión no se cayó, gracias a Dios. Es bueno el japonés, sí, es bastante bueno. Eh, a ver, el Drama Sotogate ganó el UE Derby eh, de una forma extraordinaria. Realmente recuerdo esa carrera. Eh, también creo que corrió continuar, si no me equivoco. Los japoneses metieron 1, 2, 3. Me parece que eh, para los japoneses todavía es bastante difícil eh, correr aquí en Estados Unidos. Pero bueno, veremos por ahí. Una muchacha me comentaba que este año iba a ser el año de los japoneses y que le gustaba Drama Sotogate. Veremos qué termina pasando. Ahí está Tappy Trice, mi favorito. Continúa siendo el favorito Angel of Empire, a menos de los apostadores, pero mucha gente daba este tordillo. Yo en TikTok lo mencionaba que me gustaba mucho, incluso cuando Force aún era de la carrera. Bueno, se conoció que Force al final no iba a terminar corriendo. Me gusta para ir a, dice Santiago. Va con un caballo que no tiene tanta chance, pero reitero, ayer se quedó a las puertas del Kentucky Oaks. Y probablemente con la sangre en el ojo. Veremos si hoy puede desquitar. Manda un saludo desde Texas, Estados Unidos. Los maracuchos con Maggie. O con Mage. Con Mage, perdón. Saludos desde Brasil. São Paulo. Ligando a Javier Castellano. Muy bien. Bueno, hoy corrió, para la gente de aquí de Uruguay, hoy corrieron algunos caballos. Bueno, corrió Cuileca. En Brasil no le fue muy bien. Y mañana va a estar corriendo Papamín. Y va a estar corriendo... Pingo, en Brasil en el Gran Premio San Pablo, veremos qué pasa. Saludos de Argentina, dice Dante. ¿Cuántos metros son? Dos mil metros son, ¿no? Creo. <ríe> no la estudié en la carrera. El Junior Alvarado gana fácil, dice por ahí. ¿De dónde transmite, bro? Transmito desde Uruguay. A ver si me pueden aclarar lo de la distancia de la carrera. Desde Mendoza, Argentina, saludos, dice Diego. Saludos de Puerto Rico. Saludos de Argentina, dice Mauro. Mage, dice Ángel. 1735, desde Melo, dice Guillermo. Vamos a darle me gusta y a seguir la página. Bueno, muchísimas gracias. Reitero, yo estas transmisiones las hago únicamente con el fin de que ustedes puedan mirar este tipo de carreras que a veces es difícil encontrar dónde mirarlas. Eh, pero bueno, siempre se agradece un me gusta, siempre se agradece más que nada que compartan la transmisión, que es lo más importante para mí, para que más gente la vea y algún me gusta a la página. Y a la gente que está en Twitch que nos siga, obviamente. 5, 7, 17, dice Fabricio. El 17 fijo, dice Isaac. Vamos Castellano, saludos desde Chile. 22, Mandarin Giro. Bueno, uno de los suplentes ahí. Estoy mirando de Paisandú, un saludo. Saludos desde Córdoba, saludos de Louisville, Kentucky. Castellano va por el sueño. Dice por ahí 
eh, Eberto, cual lleva castellano, lleva el número 8, Mage, uno de mis favoritos también. Saludos de Maracaibo, dice Roberto, estamos a 3 minutos ya de la carrera, capaz que se larga en hora. Ahí está el japonés de Armasoto Gay con otro excelentísimo. Bueno, ¿cuál de estos no es excelentísimos jinetes como lo es Christophe Lemar? Mandan en giro, no puede perder, dice por ahí. A Castellano solo le falta esta carrera. Esta carrera, perdón. Saludos desde Color Entre Ríos, dice Mariano. Gana King Russell. Bueno, es el primero que escucho que dice King Russell. Vamos a ver, capaz que da la sorpresa. Recordemos el año pasado lo que pasó, ¿no? Que Rich Strike. Terminó ingresando como suplente por un, por un retiro y terminó ganando una carrera extraordinaria por el lado interior con Sonny León. Por ahí vemos, creo que es el número 16, ese no llega a ver. Los panameños son los mejores del mundo, dice Jorge. Arriba los latinos, dice Daniel. Obviamente, obviamente, no, no habría ni que mencionarlo. Desde aquí, desde Uruguay, que no tenemos ningún representante, lamentablemente, que es muy difícil tener un representante allí, aunque tenemos material, yo creo, en cuanto a jinetes, pero aún no se ha dado. Tenemos buenos jinetes corriendo en Estados Unidos, pero nunca un Kentucky Derby. Eh, estamos haciendo fuerza para que algún latino gane, ya sea venezolano, puertorriqueño, ecuatoriano, lo que sea. Eh, gana el 23, te sigo de Entre Ríos, dice Ángel. 21, eh, Cyclone Mischief, corre Irad, por ahí decían. Saludos desde Venezuela, voy a Mesh Castellano, saludos para todos. Saludos desde Melo Cerro Largo, no pierde el 18. Gana el 23, es decir, ah, ya lo leí, pero si alguien lo merece es Castellano, sí, la verdad, la verdad, hay mucho gente que lo merece. Pero reitero, estamos, <coughs> perdón, estamos siempre con, con los latinos y siempre lo vamos a estar. Somos más de 1.700 personas, reitero, a todos los que puedan compartir esta transmisión, es la única manera que, o, o de las pocas maneras que tienen, ahí está el favorito para mí, de, de apoyarme, ¿sí? Compartiendo esta transmisión, la verdad me van a ayudar muchísimo, muchísimo realmente a poder seguir o a seguir poder trayendo estas, este tipo de, de emisiones y bueno, estar el año que viene con, el año que viene, el mes que viene con, o este mes que se corre el, eh, el Prigness, ¿no? Bueno, estar con Prigness y con Belmont. ¿Y quién te dice? A ver si este año podemos... Yo lo veo muy difícil realmente, reitero. Pero sería lindo volver a tener un triple coronado. Gana Angel of Empire. Guarde mis palabras. Dice Toto, mi corazón a castellano. Pero mis reales al moro Tapi Trice. A mí también me gusta Tapi Trice. Saludos de República Dominicana. Arriba Joel Rosario con el 11 y con el 13. Que el propietario es dominicano. Mirá, bueno... Si no viene siendo una victoria de un jinete latino, bueno, al menos que lo sea de un propietario. Saludos de Trinidad Flores. Saquen una cría de Mirincha y Girona, dicen. Va a estar difícil esa, ¿eh? Y falta todavía. Muy buena transmisión, dice Horacio. Vamos castellano, dice Jean. Eh, ¿El jockey hace el caballo o el caballo es el jockey? Es difícil esa pregunta, realmente. No sé qué opinan ustedes en el chat. Pero me parece que un jockey sin material puede hacer muy poco. Y a veces un caballo con un jockey que no está iluminado, que no está en sus mejores tardes, puede sacar mucho jugo, ¿sí? Eh, para mí es eh, levemente más importante el material, aunque un jockey te puede ganar una carrera muchas veces. No sé qué opinan ustedes en el chat, qué es más importante si el jinete o el caballo. Para mí es un equipo y listo. El 8 gana con Castellano y Gustavo Delgado. 5 con Luis Sáenz galopando. Bueno, el Luis Sáenz yo confieso que es uno de mis jinetes extranjeros favoritos. Señores, están viniendo para adentro, me parece... Allá lo estoy viendo ingresar al número uno. Sí, 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 sí. Se vienen para adentro nomás. Lo vamos a dejar con la transmisión y el relato oficial desde Churchill Downs. Va a demorar la entrada porque son varios caballos y van entrando bien despacio. No quieren tener ningún tipo de problema eh, en la largada, en el acomodo. Veremos cómo se plantea el trámite de carrera de esta competencia. Hay para todos los gustos realmente. Reitero, todos los que puedan dar like y compartir la transmisión, lo voy a agradecer muchísimo. Realmente, muchísimo. Y desde Twitch, obviamente, seguirnos. Ahí están ingresando. Aún ingresó Tapit Trice, que reitero, mi triple fórmula número 5 de Tapit Trice. 8 de Mage y número 21 con Irado Ortiz. Faltan ingresar todavía igual, ¿eh? Desde Nueva Bessie, Uruguay, me gusta el 6, por ahí dicen, con mi Jockey Junior Alvarado, decía Alexander. Apunten que gana el 12. Veremos, 
muchas veces pasa en los Kentucky Derby que un potrillo termina dando la sorpresa. ¿Será el caso? No lo sabemos. Saludos, te estoy siguiendo desde Atlanta, Georgia. Bueno, un abrazo grande. Señores, se viene el Kentucky Derby 149. Lo dejo con el relato oficial. Suerte oh. para todos. They're in the gates. And they're off in the Kentucky Derby. And confidence game got away well. So too verifying. Kings Barnes is up there too. Jace's road from the outside and reincarnate from mid-pack. Fires out as well in that daunting run to the first turn of the Derby. And it's verifying Kings Barnes and reincarnate. The three of them across the track early on. And they've opened up by two and a half lengths. Confidence game toward the inside is racing in fourth. Two fills is fifth. Jace's road on the outside is sixth. Hit show toward the rail, racing in seventh. Rocket Ken comes away in eighth. Raise Kane right at mid pack, running along in ninth. Mandarin Hero is tenth. King Russell's eleventh. Disarm buried at the inside while twelfth. Derma Sotagake's back in thirteenth. Cyclone Mischief is fourteenth. Mage is fifteenth. Angel of Empire down inside in sixteenth. Sun Thunder is seventeenth. Tap at Trice was last. Entering the backstretch run and another sharp pace in the derby. 45 and three fifth seconds. Verifying, flying up the backstretch with Kings Barnes, bounding along right alongside. And reincarnate is right there. Three wide on the outside, third. Two fills follows them in fourth. Confidence game covered up down inside fifth. Hit show has been moved to the outside and he's drawn to within three lengths of the lead as the round the far turn. Rocket Can is following him. Raise Kane's going the wrong way down inside. Derma Sotogake is revving up from the back of the pack and so too is Mage. Angel of Empire is finding his best stride as they round the far turn and two fills has taken the lead. Two fills turns for home in front in front by two. Mage is coming down the center. Hit show is there. Kings Barnes gives way. Angel of Empire with powerful strides down the center of the track but there's one for long to go. Two fills fights on but Mage is taken the lead. Angel of Empires are rallying third. Time is running out to catch Mage. Mage digs down deep, urged on to the white. Here to win the derby. Mage the winner. Bueno, to señores, Mage, mi enemigo. Y ya van todas las felicitaciones para Castellano y toda su gente. Terrible victoria de Mage realmente. Angel of Spire Venía atropellando por, por fuera, pero no le terminó dando. Gran carrera también del de número 3, Two Fields. Pero termina ganando Mage, una carrera extraordinaria. El tordillo Tappy Trice nunca fue de atropellada. Miren cómo empuja el señor Castellano. Gran victoria realmente. Extraordinaria conducción para que Mage termine ganando este Kentucky Derby. 2023 Venezuela nomás dicen por ahí a Angel of Empire no le dio para el segundo puesto Two Fields tuvo una gran, gran, gran carrera sin lugar a dudas felicitaciones para todo el pueblo venezolano, por ahí dicen Mage partió mal yo, a ver vamos a ver la largada, a ver si Mage con el número 8, cómo termina largando, sí tiene una largada lenta, incluso durante unos muy cortos instantes Quedó dentro del partidor, pero termina ganando una carrera extraordinaria realmente este caballo que había perdido para Forte y hoy sin él en la carrera. Me parece que le ganaba igual, pero termina ganando una carrera realmente extraordinaria. Meish con el venezolano. Bueno, segunda victoria consecutiva para jinete venezolano, ¿no? El año pasado con Sony León y ahora con, con Castellano. 2-0-1-57 para los 2.000 metros. Segundo fue Two Field, tercero Angel of Empire, cuarto Disarmy, quinto Hit Show. No apareció Tappy Trice de ningún modo. Y bueno, felicitaciones para todo el pueblo venezolano y obviamente para Javier Castellano, que es un jinete que conocemos, que tiene clase de sobra para este tipo de competencias. Mi ganador y placer, dice el Martín por ahí.
excelente, realmente felicitaciones a todo el pueblo venezolano y ya vamos a estar compartiendo, así que sigan a TV Burrera en Facebook y en Twitter también en Instagram, principalmente en Instagram, en TikTok también estamos porque vamos a estar con todas las repercusiones y todos los videos de la carrera Gran, gran victoria, estaba mirando justo. Vamos a escuchar a Castellanos. Kentucky Derby win though, Javier, or what are you thinking right now? First of all, thank you, Lord. Jesus Christ for giving me the opportunity to, to win the Derby, the dream trip for any jockey, any trainer, any horses in the industry, the whole races. I never give up. I always try hard, do the right thing. It took me a little while to get there, but finally get it. I'm very blessed and truly honest to, to give me opportunity to hold the way he did it today. The little mage, he did it really well today. He got a lot of there in the faith, come from behind horse. But turn for home, he got a lot of heart. It's a little horse, but it would be hard. A little horse with only three starts coming into this race. Did you think he had this in him? Absolutely. I think the way he run the last, the last time, the front of you, and the Florida Derby, the way he did it, finished second, the way he finished, I think I have a lot of potential to win the Kentucky Derby this year. I'd like to be thankful for the honest and the training and all the connection to give me the opportunity to ride a horse. And trust me and believe me in the horse. This is a big win for Venezuela. Not only are you from Venezuela, so is the trainer Gustavo Delgado. Congratulations, Javier. Thank you, absolutely, Venezuela. Saludo, Venezuela. Gracias, Venezuela. Los quiero mucho. Let's go to Brittany. Bueno, ahí estaban las palabras de Javier Castellano, realmente emocionado. Eh, yo, lamentablemente, ya tengo que cortar la transmisión porque me, me tiraron un aviso ahí de Facebook y me la van a restringir en, en muy pequeños instantes y en Twitch lo mismo. Así que nada, muchísimas gracias a todos por acompañarnos. Recuerden que vamos a estar aquí con Belmont Stakes, vamos a estar aquí con Pringle Stakes. Sigan la página con, para todas las novedades y además para ver ese, esas carreras que van a venir a continuación. Y veremos, yo a este le veo pasta de triple coronado no quiero mufarlo, no quiero adelantar nada, pero realmente es un caballo y un jinete, un binomio, un binomio, perdón, extraordinario. Así que muchísimas gracias a todos los que estuvieron con nosotros. Tengo que cerrar la transmisión porque me la van a cerrar y encima me van a poner una restricción y no voy a poder hacer más vivos. Sigan a TV Burrera, compartan la transmisión y nos vemos en Belmont Stakes, eh, creo que es a fines de mes. Un abrazo grande para todos.